Hi, this is Janos, this is River Audio, and I have Kintaro here with me. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, void pipes. And this is uh, an answer for Nigel because he is, uh, th that was the cat, uh, because he is building now a folded pipe. And uh, he was asking for a few pointers. And uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk uh, specifically about uh, the drivers themselves, uh, especially what the, uh, the basket of the driver and the backside of the driver, how does that contribute to, uh, how does that change the sound, the back pressure of the driver? Because uh, he asked in, in, in a question, that there's an assumption made that the area directly behind the driver will reflect sound back to the driver, potentially causing coloration. Therefore, it's often prudent to place some damping material there. Cats are playing. Okay, now they ran out of the room. Uh, while considering most drivers have big magnets behind them, how is uh, this actually a reality? So what's happening is that when you have a void pipe, uh, then uh, maybe, you know what, I'm just going to grab, grab this with me and I'm going to show you the void pipe. And uh, so here we are. And as you see, there is the driver and uh, and this section here is quite narrow behind the driver and what what he was talking about is that the sound pressure so as as the cone moves the cone moves back and forth it creates air pressure inside the cabinet and the pressure is going to hit first the back of the cabinet this back wall behind the driver and uh, and usually we place something soft right there. So I, I put a sheepskin there. For those of you who are not native English speakers, sheepskin is not the skin of the sheep, but it's the wool. So, so sheep's wool that is placed behind the driver to uh, dampen those hard reflections. And why do I call them hard reflections? Uh, because although the sound waves propagate inside this entire tall cabinet, however, the first sound waves, they hit that area right behind the driver. I'm not sure what I'm capturing now because I don't see the screen. I just see the outside of my camera. So hopefully it was all in there. So anyway, this is the area that's catching the first sound wave and then it's going to get reflected back from here. So we want this area to not resonate as much as possible. However, what Nigel was talking about is that how is this even a, an issue? Because here we have the cone, the membrane, and behind the membrane there is the magnet, there is the structure behind uh, that cone. So whatever sound pressure, sound wave is, is originating from the driver membrane is going to hit, actually it's called the spider, it's going to hit the spider, which is the rear suspension of the, uh, of the assembly for the driver. So actually the sound wave, most of the sound wave, most of the back pressure is going to hit the, the, the spider first. And uh, that's like 80% of the back pressure is going to see that first. And, and the rest of it is going to hit the, the support elements of the basket, of the frame, that, that reaches out from the magnet structure, from the motor to the frame of the driver. And the rest of the air is going to exit through the windows which are which is between the support elements so what am i talking about so i'm going to show it on my ipad and let me just pull this out for you so here you go so 
I'm just showing there we are I just want to make this larger nay it doesn't wanna show it larger now now oh, oh it does so so here we go so that's how a driver looks like so come on go back yeah there we are so so the pressure is going down first and and that yellowish thing that's the spider so that's the that's the rear suspension of the of the driver and and that's where the first sound waves will bounce off of course the majority hits the spider but some of it is going to hit these uh, the support elements which connect the frame of the driver so this top bit connected to the magnet those are those uh, elements there and and they will also reflect the sound back so the spider and those support elements will reflect the sound wave back towards the cone and uh, and then depending on how big those support elements are and how small the window it is if that window is very small like here we have large windows between the support element and that's good that's the hallmark of a good uh, basket of a good frame and and the better the frame the bigger the windows are uh, between the elements so let me just uh, show you an example which is not such a good driver as this uh, and uh, there you go let it load and hopefully hopefully so here do you see this that that's the 8 inch version of that that Fostex FF 125 WK that I have in Lagrange. This is the 8 inch, the bigger version. And you see that here we have much thicker supports connecting elements that connect the frame to the basket. And now this is a problem because here what you see compared to the previous driver that um, this is like a stamped basket and the previous one was like a cast basket. And the problem is not stamping or casting, but the problem is that, that here you have these flat big pieces. You see that, that silvery piece, which is relatively big. And, uh, and then there is like a window where the air can go through, air can go across, and that window is relatively small. It's, it's roughly a little bit bigger than the, uh, than the metal piece itself. And uh, so, so, so this means that a lot of the air is going to get reflected back into that area, into this space that is between the magnet, or I would say between the spider and, and, the, and the cone, so that it, the sound will bounce a lot before it can escape through those open holes. And what that means is that you will have some a tiny little bit of time smearing because the bounce is like really fast so timing is won't be a big issue but but like phase uh, issues so phase cancellations at those frequencies where we have the bouncing going on will happen and uh, so so what's happening is that like the really high frequencies a lot of it is going to get smeared or partially cancelled and uh, I would say like everything above uh, kilohertz is going to get affected by the sound waves bouncing back and forth in the internals. And, uh, and the only way to minimize that as a manufacturer is to open the windows bigger so that the, uh, the air inside, the, the air pressure fluctuation changes, the sound waves can exit the fastest possible so they stay there and uh, have less alterations. Of course, uh, this process, how much the sound is affected is uh, frequency specific. So when we have higher frequencies uh, that are of the wavelength that are the size of the, where it is, here, the width of the basket, everything that's that width 
or shorter is going to be affected a lot and then waves which are a lot longer are not going to bounce back and forth inside because they don't even fit into that small area so that pressure wave is just slowly exit out from the driver and there won't be any uh, significant, significant alteration to those waves or any noticeable alterations but the short wavelength will be bouncing back and forth and uh, it has two problems one of that the most important one is that it's bouncing back to the cone so it's going to modulate the response of the cone so the cone will be doing its dance and uh, and and that's why there is a big improvement for loudspeakers when you get a better quality basket because these reflections are much lesser in a higher quality frame higher quality basket so it means that uh, that the the cone will get less of these reflections and will be doing like less flexing and modulations and so so whatever information the cone will be giving towards you the direct radiation will be much cleaner if the rear side is better uh, and this is especially true as the sound pressure level increases because the uh, when the sound pressure level is really low even if there is a lot of refraction, the, the, the pressure of those reflections is low enough not to bother the cone much. But as, as the sound pressure increases, then uh, this area, this volume that's in between the, 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 the spider and the backside of the cone, it's going to be really restrictive and it's, it, something is going to have to give and that will be your cone so that's why this is one reason why small drivers start to distort when you play them really loud and and one thing uh, where you can observe this distortion so this is the reason why for example when you build a single driver speaker even with a small cone like uh, the diatom the, uh, the 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 610 diatom which is like a, a small driver and uh, and it has just phenomenal bass and when you crank it up it, it sounds fantastic and when it starts distorting actually it's not the bass frequencies where you notice the distortion when you play loud the bass plays just becomes prodigious and, and huge but it will be the high frequencies you start hearing the distortion in the high frequencies and that's because those sound waves that bounce in the back of the cone and and between the spider will be those high frequency elements and and they will create high frequency resonances in your cone and that's how why you will hear that the high frequencies are restricted when you have a, a, a smaller full range driver and the problem there is not that it's just 16-inch driver and that's why it's distorting but but the area the volume of the area behind that like a 6-inch cone is much smaller than the area behind like an 8-inch or 10-inch driver so that's why you can push the 10-inch driver a uh, single driver speaker or 8-inch single driver speaker much louder than let's say a six inch or a five inch or, or or a four inch driver single driver because it takes a whole lot of higher SPL to saturate that space that airspace behind the cone to make it troublesome for the high frequency production so that's number thing that uh, uh, the the back pressure of the driver is most affected by the driver itself by the basket itself and when I, the, this thing that I've, I've shown you you see uh, this uh, this stamped basket so that's like a flat metal pieces face uh, the inside of the of the driver and and that's not that's a very unfortunate scenario because these flat surfaces these flat supports it it's like a sail like when you have a boat or a ship and you have a sail and there's wind 
uh, and it catches the wind and it and the wind is tugging it back and forth the same thing is happening to the stamped basket <laughs> it, it's going to be just when when the pressure wave comes out it wants to expand and when it, it, it goes out it wants to shrink and because it's not not like a, a linen like like a, like a real sail would be but it's made of metal it's much more rigid so when it gives and, and takes it will be based on its self resonant frequency and and when you have these uh, drivers which have these poorer quality uh, stamped baskets the, the main problem will be that resonant that that self resonance that the cone does i mean that the basket does and it will be noticeable in the output of the driver as a nasty harsh metallic taste and and that is one of the hallmarks of these Fostex ff numbers wk series and the numbers change according to like four inch six inch eight inch driver and uh and actually you could say like janos then if you know that this is a bad thing then why did you choose this for la grande and i chose this for la grande to demonstrate it to you that you can take uh, an inferior basket and and fix the problem yourself so you do not need to pay top money just to avoid this problem you can dampen the basket and um, I have shared this before in a, several videos before that you can treat the basket of the drivers and, and the way that I did with my Lagron was to add that blue tape, the 3M scotch tape, which is like, like a paper. Do I have some here? No. Uh, I, I will show it next video. So it's, it's like almost like painter's tape, but stronger. So it's a sticky thing. In the US you can buy it. I'm not sure if in Europe you can purchase it. This is something that I realized that in every continent you have different tapes. They are widely different. So I don't know what is there available in the UK, but you want something that is like, like a papery tape that sticks pretty well. And, and I just like tape like five layers of it around this stamped part of the basket and the important bit is when you go on the inside on the inside you just make it make sure that it sticks to the uh, to the basket and it's not creating a void so usually these are not perfectly fat surfaces but a little bit cramped so there's there's a hollow so don't put a tape on it and then leave leave a gap because that will act like a second sail and it will make the situation worse. So you tape it so that the tape is flat. It matches perfectly the, the metal surface and make like five rounds of it. And, and that totally takes care of that nasty metallic resonance that comes from that poor quality basket. <laughs> and, um, and actually, also one more note to add to this that uh, uh, one more thing that is uh, important is the screws that, that you use to screw the driver into your cabinet uh, and if you use screws to put together your cabinet don't make them steel or iron or stainless steel screws because they will also resonate at that resonant frequency they have put in brass or bronze screws and uh, and that's because if you put in steel or stainless steel or iron screws they will add a resonant frequency in my case what i showed with my darling uh, with my lagrange speakers the resonance was i think at, at 10.2 kilohertz and it was gross it was large like 6 db peak just from the screws and when i changed the screws to uh, to brass then that that peak just 100 percent went away so that's just a lesson that metals like iron it's especially 
they have like a really nasty resonant peaks and that can come from the the frame your basket or from the screws that you use to put together your cabinet so that's why there are some drivers that say like have like cast magnesium basket they do not have this problem they do not have this nasty nasty really narrow band resonance that these uh, iron cast iron uh, baskets have and the other thing that when uh, i would like to show you so what why the the cube audio driver is much more superior than this is because there i will show you that uh, so this is how the cube audio drivers look like you see that there's like uh, the sup there's the support element and you see the window so it has like a tremendously big space where the air can exit so most of the behind the frame of the driver most of the space is open and there are those four support beams which are not just like pieces of metal flapping in the wind but like support columns that are holding <laughs> together the the motor and the frame and uh, and and when there's the air pressure coming back and forth that is just stable that's holding there and there's like most of the the area it's like a window window to the back of your cabinet to the inside of the cabinet and that window is there for the air to come and pass in between and uh, we still have the resonance with the spider but uh, but here uh, actually well i think it's really hard to show uh, but uh, when you if may, maybe you guys can look it up and and see that even the back side maybe maybe you can see here do you see there there's like holes drilled to that back side over there and those holes are drilled there so that to give more chance for the air to to escape uh, through that so so to just enlarge the uh the the surface the area where the air pressure can exit from behind the cone but at the same time still keep that whole assembly rigidity and and, and strength to support uh the the frame to the basket so so that's the thing number one that uh, most of the interaction happens right behind the driver and and when you have a, a really good quality basket then uh, that minimizes those issues there still still are issues but a fraction what you have and when you have uh, not such a, a, a good solution but you have car, um, drivers that have like those flimsy supports and then white supports then you want to dampen them to make sure that they don't oscillate they don't resonate and and you can even go to town with it and uh, and when you have that flat surface like build it up so it's not flat but it, it it's like like a dome looking to the inside of the driver so when when there's the pressure wave coming into it it's not doesn't see a flat surface and gets reflected directly back but it, it's like a like a wedge shape so when the pressure is coming it breaks on the wedge and it's forced to the outside to leave the area instead of being reflected back so whenever you have any kind of surface that is in the way of the sound think of it like like you are designing a ship hull or or uh, a sh or an airplane's uh, body like it has to be like the aerodynamic and the more aer aerodynamic all the surfaces are that are seeing the pressure coming off from the driver the less alteration it will make to the sound the less turbulence the less reflections bouncing and the quicker the energy can exit to the space and then uh, that's why i want to have the back side a little bit uh, softened up by by like that sheepskin is that because from there you will have reflections uh, 
coming back at the driver basket again and they will go and do a second round of uh, merry-go-round inside and and you want to minimize those waves that get reflected directly back into the uh, basket area and um, so how does this work for the void pipe because for the void pipe you would say that okay Janos, that compromises this whole, everything that happens uh, inside the driver, inside that basket area, the, the spider cone area, frame by the frame, that already compromises the high frequencies. And then the void pipe is supposed to amplify, right, the whole frequency range. And the answer is yes and no, because you want most of the information coming to you at the high frequencies at the, at the mid to high frequencies from the driver cone itself and you want this triangle shaped cabinet this wedge shaped cabinet to amplify the base because uh, for the high frequencies down to about uh, a kilohertz the driver cone perfectly couples to the air and below a kilohertz below 500 hertz that's where the efficiency really starts to drop because it cannot move cannot transmit those frequencies towards the front of the driver efficiently that's why we need the cabinet to support those frequencies and and that's why it's not a problem that those high frequencies get jumbled up they do not amplify as one within the back cabinet also then we add a little bit of stuffing that that helps to further attenuate those high frequencies so they don't excite the cabinet to to smear that high frequency image so i think that's that's for now like how how the backside of the driver works in the pipe what it does and uh, and how the driver itself contributes to the issue. So, thank you, Nigel, for your questions. Thank you for your uh, buy me a coffee donations. It's really, really helpful, and uh, and I hope it's inspiring to everyone <laughs> that that you are building such a wonderful um, project. And uh, and I will share more about it and. Uh, Everyone have an awesome day. Bye-bye.